What's going on guys? Welcome back to another vlog. Today is a bit of an update on the S13. Now this car pretty much has not been touched since uh, coming back from round one this year, where we placed second. Of course, I had to go and break it just a little bit more without meaning to. And basically, I turned the car off by the isolator switch. Turns out, my isolator switch doesn't have capacitors or diodes like some of them do to uh, absorb voltage spikes. So I have, basically the car doesn't run right now, and I've completely stuffed the uh, Tux hall sensor we have for the cam trigger. So, car no go anywhere. I had to tow it inside, it's the strap. <laughs> we have some things in the box, and as you can probably see, the box is a bit bigger than just the hall sensor. So, the other issue we had at the event was the alternator packed up. So, what do we have here is a big boy 140 amp LS alternator. Uh, it's the Tux conversion kit. So there's a bunch of little brackets and stuff in here. I was gonna put a second hand alternator in it. I have one lying in a bench, but I figured there's no point putting another 30 year old alternator and probably having the same thing up and down the line, even if it did work momentarily. Plus, this is a good upgrade. Never gonna uh, need anything more than that. Um, now I did do a little bit of damage running basically the thing at such low voltage that whole day for quite a while. Honestly, I'm impressed that it uh, got as far as it did, but we actually melted, I've stuffed the fuse back into it, but we melted the fuse holder. That was our, that's melted fuse. It was still working, but because the pumps have been running at such a low voltage, they actually draw a lot more amps. I um, managed to burn that fuse holder. The wiring and stuff's rated for more, but we'll have to upgrade the uh, fuse holder on that now. Seems the pumps are alright. They did make a bit of noise on the day. But I think that was uh, a bit to do with... I ran them out of fuel a couple of times too. <laughs> Obviously, but the coil packs uh, would have not loved life running at such low voltage. We actually gapped our plugs down to like 0.2. We used a Coke can and literally like basically couldn't see a gap in it just to try and keep spark. Uh, still did blow spark out a little bit up in the top rev range. Um, I have to get through the night. Um, the alternator was doing something, I should say. It wasn't like it wasn't doing anything. Idled, it was doing nothing. It would literally start misfiring if I idled for 30 seconds and like start breaking up to the point you couldn't drive off. Uh, once you revved it up to like 4,000 or whatever, it, we maybe got like 11.8 to 12.1 volts sort of in the car. Um, but yeah, not ideal. Anyway, she made it through. We still got second place, so still looking pretty damn good. Scaff mark on the wall. Few little uh, tire marks here and there. This rim cop most of the abuse, bullying everybody. Got a nice crack through there, but it's uh, it's holding there. <laughs> we might do something about that for the next round, but we'll see. Great job, get it running again. Put a new sensor in it. Unfortunately, that does mean pulling the rocker cover off, pulling the front cam gear out, so that we can get to the locking nut on the inside for this sensor. Um, so it's a bit fiddly and annoying. Just as I'm delving into pulling everything apart, just noticed a couple of things. Looks like we are melting through the shielding on our braided wastegate lines. So that is not ideal. Should probably look at putting some shielding on this. Um, some proper heat shielding. Good thing we spotted it. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yep, there is one. Get the light. If you can see it in there. Once I get the rocker cover off, should be a bit easier to uh, put some needle nose pliers down there and get it. Rocker cover is off, so you can get an idea of what we're going to do. Looks like it has gotten the hottest it ever has been in this engine bay. That's the sensor we've got to replace. And as you can see, there's the locking nut on that side, which you'd think, hey, I could probably fit fitter spanner in there, but absolutely bloody not. So every time I've had to do this, I have to pull this bolt and wash a spacer out. You get a spanner in there. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm gonna go look for a spanner down the back that I can cut and grind something into place that will make this job a bit easier because I don't want to have to pull it off every time if I have to do this again. But I have found and chopped up a spanner that hopefully 
Oh, I'm definitely going to need two hands because I think it's going to turn the whole bolt. Yes, all right. But hopefully we can do that without pulling the camera out. All right, well, it didn't go as planned, but it did come out. <laughs> but I'm going to guess the uh, grub screw right there. Uh, it didn't hold very well once I started turning the... Uh, you can see the little divot in where it was. It started turning. And um, we then just pulled out from the O-ring. So we'll just have to make sure when I put this back together, we'll do that... Uh, Allen key grub screw back up and hope it holds and check it again before I put everything back together. I'm sure, I'm sure I had like three rolls of Teflon tape, but God knows where they've gone. So, you know, I found some thread sealer. I think it will do the job. So, uh, liquid thread sealer. So, we'll put a little bit of this on it and then uh, a thread locker for the nut. And we basically got to set this to, I'll double check, I think it's 0.9 or one millimeter gap um, between the uh, sensor and the wheel. So we'll do all that, and then um, rather than put everything back together and find out I still got a problem, I will hook up the laptop to the Link ECU. Um, we'll do a, what do they call it? A trigger scope, and uh, see if we've got a reading from this. Fingers crossed we do, put it all back together, and hopefully it fires up. And I have no idea how this whole uh, ECU thing works, pretty much. <laughs> I've uh, just been lucky that I have mates that help me out give them a call and be like, what the fuck do I do? So anyway, yeah, we've just gone into ECU controls up here. Whoop. Trigger scope, bring up this, and then we'll click capture while we're cranking and hopefully we'll have a reference. So let's see how we go. All right. Here goes nothing. The fact that the pumps were going is a very promising sign, although it didn't seem to capture. Hell yeah! That is a very damn good sign. So, first off, even without looking at this, I can pretty much tell you it's working because without an RPM signal, the pumps won't go with the ignition cranking. Uh, it'll just do ignition uh, to prime when you flick the key on, but it wasn't doing anything before. So, we have an RPM signal and as you can see that confirms it so as long as there is nothing else we've missed diagnosing uh, what's wrong with it I should be able to put this rocker cover back together plug everything up if I have a new set of plugs I'll put a new set of plugs in now because uh, those ones should not be gapped 2.2 we'll go back to our 0.6 we had in it and um, yeah we should have a running car again Whoop. Luckily, they're the same plug as my Toyota Aristo, and I had just ordered six of those uh, for the service I'm coming up on that. So luckily, I had four here to do. Plugs coming out, they all look the same. A little bit black, but yeah, you can see there's like no gap there at all. Let's give that uh, YouTube magic everyone's been cracking on about a shot, hey? Nap, nah, hang on. Boom. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? All back together. Give the rock cover a little bit of a wipe down. Need to polish the manifold too. But yeah, she's all back together and ready for the moment of truth. Catch can still has absolutely nothing in it, so happy days with that. Everything's all back together. So all I really need to do is alternator swap, which I'll do tomorrow. And get some uh, get some shielding for those braided lines and. Then there's a few suspension and steering tweaks we're going to be doing soon um, before round two, hopefully, to get a little bit more angle out of this thing. As much as uh, the setup it's got at the moment feels really good, it doesn't have a hell of a lot of angle. Most of my driving is literally on the lock stop, which doesn't give me any margin for error. So anyway, let's see what happens. Maybe. God, I hope this works. I hope I haven't got anything. Well, I reckon she's gonna fire. Come on, baby.
it stalls out when it's cold because there's uh, no idle air valve there, so. But she's fine, but she's warm. Sure if that will wrap up this video, but I'd probably say it's not going to. I will see you in the next day to do the alternator. Alrighty, it's another day at the factory here at Traction Tires. Time to get back into the S13. Today is alternator time. So we've got everything laid out here. This is the Tux conversion kit. Pull your suit. Hopefully it should be pretty simple and straightforward and everything will work as advertised. First things first, get the battery disconnected. So you can tell I never unload my car before necessary, which is usually never. Hot damn, love this engine bay. Ready. So we're going to get that dirty old piece of crap out of there. Alright, got my phone set up, balancing in between a box. So let's get to this. Alright, so we need to unplug air yeah, temp sensor. <laughs> Took way too bloody long. Just to get the power steering belt off. So I've got the uh, Tarx relocation kit uh, that drops the power steering pump down. The adjuster, even at like full short, that belt is basically too tight to come off, which I knew about. So first up, I was trying to pull this pulley off, was having not a buyer of it, but I could not get enough movement out of it otherwise. So eventually, she popped free and the belt came off. This one should be simple now. There's a uh, parts power for quickly. Alright, that should hopefully be the hard part. So we're just going to unplug the main on here. Get off you bastard. And then a 10 or 12 mil off the back of that. 10 mil to get that power wire off. And then I'll probably have a look at the instructions as to where this bracket and adapter and stuff goes, but I'm pretty sure we delete this whole... Where am I showing right now? 99% sure this bracket here gets replaced with one of those. But yeah, see how it goes. Pair the pair. 140 amp LS alternator. What have you still looking at the amps? 80 amps. There we are. Now we've got our Tarx pulley. Near identical. I wonder how different the uh, belt size is. Alright, so the belt that came off was a. Where did you go? 5PK 940, this is 5PK 970, so 30mm longer, so even though the pulley size is near identical, obviously this mounts in a slightly different spot. Alright, so, bracket on here, put some anti-seize on that bolt, because it was pretty tight to go through when I just tried to test it. Easier. Okay. Now 
the diagram showed it looking like this. So I'm guessing we just go up as high as it goes. So just notice before we put anything on, the cutout for the wire to go through is going to be like opposite when this is sitting in the car where the wire comes from this side. So I can't see any reason why I can't just turn that around. Did it work? Hmm. Slight differences. All right, small file later, and everything sits in properly. We've got our tax pulley on there, but I didn't say this is the uh, stock one. And if you read the instructions, it'll tell you that you need to put a washer on that. But if you don't read the fine print like me for a few minutes, uh, you will be looking for a washer that isn't there because this is actually got the spacer built into the back of it. Even though the instructions said to tighten up that bracket in that position, if you look further down, once the outlet is mounted, it's, uh, the picture shows it in a slightly lower spot. And the outlet is not fitting as it is. So, loosen that back off again. And we'll try that again. So we can uh, tension up that belt properly before everything is up together because it's going to be hard to get into those allen key bolts once the shroud and everything is in there. We're just going to bolt the fan up loose just with two nuts. We'll adjust and tighten up the bracket and then pull that back off to put the shroud through. Alright, fan's mounted. Always a good idea to check. Make sure you've got a reasonable amount of resistance in that fan. If you can spin it and there's like nothing to it, it means your viscous hub, hub. Your viscous hub is basically shot and your fan's doing very little when your motor's running. Wow. Something else I have spotted. Jeez. Looks like my fan has seen better days. All of these fins have damage. I wonder how long that's been like that. To be honest, I haven't really paid much attention. Hmm. Anywho, it hasn't blown up yet, so I guess it'll stay like that for now. Right, fast forward a few minutes. Alternator is all in. Bolted up final. Belt tension done. Uh, wiring, best thing about this, and one of the main reasons we're using now this alternator as an upgrade, is the main plug is exactly the same, plug and play. On a factory loom, there's a good chance you'll have to change that terminal to a bigger one, but because mine had aftermarket wiring already, it happened to be the right size. Um, the little cutout there that we put at the bottom works perfect. I do just need to get a bigger insulator boot. It doesn't cover everything properly enough that I would call it safe. So we'll get that sorted probably tomorrow night. Time to unbolt the fan again and put the power steering pulley and everything back together and then shroud and fan back in. So. And just like that, she's back together. That sort of fiddly tight stuff is so bad for your wrists, but she's all done. We'll pipe them back on, fan, shroud, all that stuff. Everything's plugged in, I'll double check that. Yep, clicked in. All right, battery's back connected. So, hopefully no major fires, yeah? Yeah! 
Chelsea Deneau for coming out, which is freaking awesome. So, uh, keen as for that, should be fun. I think he's partying in the uh, Kiva Reed AU RB20 Ute, so should be interesting. And we got second in the first round, so fingers crossed we can at least get on that podium or up there again and be in uh, contention for the championship this season. So I walk away thinking we're done and come back and going, oh no, I must have stopped something, somehow I'm leaking coolant. I just forgot to put the overflow hose on. So Christ was averted. Whoops. If you're enjoying the content, then uh, please subscribe. It means a lot. And uh, hopefully we'll get another video out for you very shortly. The next video should be cool. It's either going to be the Aristo getting a few upgrades or the S13 suspension upgrades. And we're going to go in depth a little bit about the corner weighting process and alignment and all that fun jazz. So should be interesting. Stay tuned.